Hey angels, welcome to Humor Healing Humanities Humanitarian Chronicles, where I feature extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. Today on our fabulous episode, we have an incredibly extraordinary woman joining us, Jenny Alpert. She is a magnificent singer, songwriter, world's internationally acclaimed pianist, guitarist, um, painter, inspired human, featured in TV, film, radio, in my car, on my home speakers for every fiesta we have. Jenny, I'm her biggest fan, and it's my goal on this earth to meet my heroes every day and interview them. So that is why Jenny's on this show. Not only does she produce amazingly inspiring music, which you all need to listen to, and I'll have her tell you how to find her, but she actually produces music for, for causes, and she shares her music to raise money for those causes, such as donating blood, helping women and children in the system, uh, helping foster youth, helping incarcerated people rehabilitate themselves. So Jenny is truly using her gifts and talents to help people that need help in this world, and she is a real-life hero, and I just had to have her on the show. Jenny, welcome. You're an inspiration. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're amazing. Hi, sweet, beautiful soul. She's an inspiration in my life, and I know when you hear about everything she's doing in the world, she'll be an inspiration in yours. So the other reason I wanted to have her on today is because she just recently reunited with her biological father, D. Sure. D. Who, the big D. Who, um, I mean, it was so inspiring. She was just telling me how she was helping him, like, heal his issues naturally and get to a place where he was self-sufficient, confident, and able to function in society. So, Jenny, would you like to share with us this incredible journey of how you found your biological father and how you're helping him now to be a functional human in the world? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, sure. Is that where you want to start? We should start there, huh? Well, it is only one of the magnificent things you do. I mean, there's blood-driven... There's the foster youth that you do, you know, your incredible music for, women and children in the system. I mean, I just want you to share with people what you're doing in the world and how you're using your musical gifts to help other people along okay. this journey called life. So wherever you want to start, sweetie, is where I want to start. Okay. Um, well, okay. Can you, okay. Um, so we right. So I was adopted when I was about four. And I was in foster homes um, uh, up until that point. And um, I was very fortunate to be adopted by a really wonderful family. And um, they really enriched and um, helped me develop. They enriched my life and really helped me develop as a person in so many ways. And all along the journey of being with the Alberts, I knew I had been adopted. I knew I had come from somewhere. And I was really interested and curious. I've always been interested in the DNA line and the history of that and where I came from um, to add to the riches of where I was fortunate enough to grow up. So, um, yeah, so I knew a lot because I was old enough to know. Um, but I had never met my biological parents, and I only knew pieces of the story up until I was about 16 or 17 when my biological mother passed away. And then I was informed of that and got a little bit more of the story as to how she passed away, why, and a few other details that sort of um, added to the information as to how I ended up in the foster care system and adopted in the first place. And part of that um, story included D and his, um, a bit of his journey, just a little. And I just kind of got that information and sort of set it aside and knew about it and moved forward and met a lot of my biological mother's side of the family over the course of several years and was so, um, so uh, touched deeply by the connections that we had. And they met my adopted family and it was neat, like what a neat experience. But I never went down the paternal side path. And then about two years ago, about two years ago, yeah, um, I got help from a private investigator who happened to have been able to check out the system um, with Dee's full name and got me an address and a bunch of different family member history and a wow. lot of stuff. 
so I started to follow that path just out of curiosity to sort of learn a little bit about the DNA and I was quite slow about it and it took about six or so months to really decide to show up at the address and sort of see what would happen and when I first got there I realized it would probably be smart to ask permission to show up <laughs> and really figure Definitely. out if it was something that would make sense to someone else's life. And it seemed that it would be an open door, and I just thought, oh, it'll be a nice meeting. And it ultimately turned out to be, well, let's say today is December 5th, so it's now the two-month anniversary of the moment that he released. He was, sorry, it's the two-month anniversary today from when he was released from jail after wow. having turned himself in willingly to clear any issue so that he and I could build a relationship on solid ground. And it's also about two months, perhaps, if we added the time he was in jail, depending on what happened there, he's at least two months sober of hard narcotics and, and, and drug abuse, and that's all on his record, nothing I asked him to do. And it's just quite interesting, and a lot has happened since I met him in July around the 22nd. Um, now we're in December 5th, and time has flown by, but it's been a really amazing blessing and a just incredible journey to, to know another person and to have a connection that is hard to articulate. You know, I, I have a lot of value for my adopted family and a lot of special connection for my maternal side, and then all of a sudden there's somebody on this planet that's still alive who gave me life who's from my paternal past, and that oh is God. just kind of really awesome. Honey, that's beautiful. I love that story. I mean, I have been so fortunate to be with you along this journey since minute one, getting texts. And I mean, the story is truly <laughs> film worthy. I really hope some documentarian is documenting this because it truly is a film. It is truly, my dog wants to join this conversation. Hold on <laughs> Sorry, my Julia wants to come in and be part of this magic right now. Julia? She's, she's one of your biggest fans because I play music for her. Come on, MBB. Okay. Sorry, Ruckus is not available. Um, so, yeah, my dog's here. She wants to join in on the fun. But, no, that's seriously incredible. Hi. And, yes, Julie, uh, Ju Julia, Jenny is not only a um, whisperer to uh, human hearts through her music, but also to animal hearts with her dog Ruckus and her cat and every other animal I've ever seen you interact with, lizards, geckos, whatever. So, <laughs> I had fish. A um, no, I but, but in, in, all, in all seriousness, um, the show will only take off if there are puppies on screen, so I had to get her in. But no, that is truly such an amazingly touching story. What did your adoptive family have to say about it? Do they, obviously they know that you reconnected well, for with a while, your tell many people anyone really because I didn't want to be affected by someone else's concern or fear or projection and I really wanted to go with my own instinct and my own um, personal experience uh, and what I would observe and to trust my own self so for a, for a good like three and a half four weeks when I first found on and chose to kind of carry on for the first three weeks in July and part of August just to be curious about his whole life and how he came into this world, how he came to meet my biological mother, their whole relationship and his whole life. Like I just wanted to have the freedom and the independence to make my own decisions about it. And that really was a good choice for me. And when I chose to do that and then introduce him to specific people in my life, it's specific times with a certain sense of care, I think that it was, we were all better for it. So that was really cool and positive. And it so happens that though I did know a lot before meeting Don, I was pretty well equipped and well armed. I found it really interesting that you mentioned earlier a lot of the other like social services that I've been involved in. I've always been really interested in social services in some way, shape, or form. And I've always been a volunteer. When I was really young, my, my adopted mother and I did this thing called, um, um, we were the National Charity League. Oh, and wow. it turns out, well, National Charity League, it turns out that my biological mother also was a National Charity League partner and was actually a debutante. Wow. I never finished all that because I wasn't into the whole dresses and having to set the table perfectly. But, oh. but I mean, I later... Yeah, I saw, yeah. Kitsilian. So, but anyway, so we did that, and that was a big volunteering thing. We did Meals on Wheels, and we helped um, the Motion Picture Hospital in Woodland Hills, and there was other things that we did, and I, 
I really felt a sense of, of gratification for, for helping people back then. I thought that was a really neat way to spend time. And then um, through college, I worked with different organizations, Take Back the Night. I was a speaker and a performer or the women's clothesline talking about different aspects of sur- being a survivor and different elements of different types of maybe you would call it abuse or whatever. And that was really interesting. And that kind of led to working with a group called Children of the Night, which is a nonprofit that features helping girls mostly, but any child who falls into prostitution or street living. Wow. And um, this wonderful woman named Lois Lane started this organization and she basically helps um, rehabilitate and save a lot of w- girls before the will help kind of change their path. So I volunteered there for a while. And then that kind of segued into volunteering with a lot of foster kids, foster youth, group foster youth, um, and both just secular and also through j- different Jewish organizations, Big Sister type of thing. Um that then led to having a pretty stellar relationship with the Downtown Women's Center for quite some time in Los Angeles, which is a shelter for homeless women. It's changed a lot these days, but back then, um, I put together a little band. Cute. There were three of us, and we would go and perform for all of the holidays and like help you know, with the soup kitchen and everything else, and it was really, a, that was fun. Um, later thereafter, um, I remember working, I, well, a friend of mine, an acquaintance ended up going to prison for a year for, um, a couple things he was incorrect about, but then there was a few things that weren't really his fault, but because of the circumstances, that's what happened. And I was really worried for him, obviously, because he was stuck there and he wasn't a violent criminal, but he definitely broke the law. So Wow. It inspired me to write a rehabilitation program, a rehabilitation program for those who are in prison. And I contacted the downtown Los Angeles Police Department with this like four page whole program that they accepted for the men's correctional facility. Oh but what's weird is my biological father was there at the same time I was writing it, which I never even knew the timing of it all. Oh, my God. So I don't find to... anything weird. <laughs> I don't find any of that weird. Synchronicity, sister. Yeah. You are in the like, flow. I mean, like, Really funny. I think that the the point of all of that though is that then later leading into doing um, blood driven for um, to donate blood and save a life type of tour that I put together for like blood awareness, which had to kind of do with my biological um, cousin who was surviving from blood transfusions. Like there, I think there's just a lot of connection there. But the point is that when I ended up meeting D and learning so many different aspects of his life and where he came from, how he came to be, what he was exposed to, what he learned, why he became, why he made choices, why his whole life was what it was, which was essentially um, pretty much like a full on surviving drug addict, most often on the streets, if not incarcerated for most crimes that are related to that. And, um, wow. yeah. And, and just dealing with like a, like a, like a very high functioning mental wellness relationship on this planet, like those things, it really made me realize that everything I've ever really done in my life, um, in terms of social services and being interested in searching and like discovering and learning all of that became skill set for me upon really meeting my biological flesh. And like, that is something that's so, I think in some sort of DNA subconscious kind of way, like we all kind of know we're motivated and inspired by one way or another. But I definitely can say that those first three weeks when I didn't tell my adopted family yet or many friends of mine what I was doing and why I was doing it, which I call it field work because it went from like two or three hours a day. It's like eight or nine hours up till 4 a.m. Like chilling where he was outside chilling in his lifestyle wow. to really see and learn about it and to get to know him truly to see what he wanted in his life that um, I probably wouldn't have had that much freedom to do those things if I had continuously shared everything every step of the way. So in a way I did kind of separate myself, but I think it was a better choice. Well, that's, that's so beautiful. And that's one thing I've always admired about you. I've had the privilege of knowing you as a friend for so many years. And what I really love and admire about you is the genuine unconditional love 
that you show to life, to people, the chances that you give people, the second chances, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth chances that you give people when they act a fool. Seriously, I mean, it's rare that anyone meets a spirit like you who, like, actually sees people's, you know, character defects, craziness, um, shortcomings, I and and accepts them and, like, actually just wants to unconditionally, radically accept them, move through them, you know, work through them together if those people are open to working through them together. I mean, I don't, I don't meet many people like you. You're like, you're like a phantasmagoric character in the world. You're like this amazing little creature that needs to be written about in a book, but for now we'll just interview you on camera. No, truly. And, and that story about your dad is just truly incredible. And I love Caroline Mace, how she writes about, she writes that book and talks all about sacred contracts. When our souls are up there talking to God and the angels about what our purpose is down here. And they say they have these agreements with other souls. Like, okay, I'm going to jump into this womb. I'm going to have these parents. You come down and be my brother. You come down and be my friend. You come down and be my music manager. You be my tour guide, whatever. And these little parts of all of our souls get dispersed and like it's our goal in life to go find those pieces of our soul and another thing that I love about you during this journey I kept you know and a lot of things that you've gone through in your life that we talk about I, I always say Jenny why don't you see a psychic like why don't you you know get a psychic reading and you'll say to me because I love the unknown and I love waking up every day saying what amazing things are going to happen to me today what is going to unfold in my life? What am I going to discover? And if I knew what was going to happen, I wouldn't have that sense of excitement about the new day. And I think that's amazing. Like most people just want to know certain things and am I on the right track? And you're like, no, I'm just going to trust my guides. Obviously, I feel like your mom is one of your guides for sure. You've got angels. And my father and my biological mother, um, my biological grandmother and my adoptive grandmother I think are four really powerful energies that I have somehow had the opportunity to cross paths with while they were living here at some point in time. And I definitely, I do believe in energy and I do believe in connectiveness and I do believe in spirit and I actually really believe in present moment. And the reason why I have visited psychics before, like I'm open to it all, but the very truth is, is that I don't need the noise. Like if I'm still enough and present and aware then I can psychically feel my own sense. And the real truth is, like, I, I, I clean dishes. I put things away legitimately as I'm doing something or right after I'm done, specifically to clear the clutter so that I'm in the present moment as much as possible. Because in my mind, I'm like, oh, if I have a stack of dishes or something dirty, then it's going to slow me down in two hours or three hours, and then I'm going to be erasing the past instead of being available in the present moment for that moment. And I wow. have been like really adamant about that. And I have been for so long. Like it almost seems like for other people that it's like crazy or controlling or whatever. And as a matter of fact, it's my biggest fight for freedom. Wow, honey. Wow. I have honestly never heard that type of thing described the way you did. Like other people might look at you and describe that action, like you about the dishes as OCD, but you just describe it so eloquently. Like, no, it's actually my real world, real world action that I do to be in the present moment. And so that I can be available for future present moments. This is why Jenny Alper is an amazing, incredible being because she comes out with these, she just births these ideas like fully formed calves that just walk into your head and heart. And that is what her music does. Her music is just as inspiring as her words and her realizations. And you guys all need to listen to her songs. I mean, I, I've been just so inspired watching her journey and being a fan throughout all these years. My brother plays clarinet with Jenny sometimes. Oh, yeah. um, uh, prodigies need to connect and play together. And I've been to so many of her live shows, and I, I just have every single CD. I've got them all downloaded on my phone. I promote them all over the place. Um, but, yeah, can you just talk a little bit about your music and how these realizations of your life flow into your lyrics and your songs and your causes? Well, I actually feel like I'm an instrument and the melody and the lyrics and the music somehow flow through me. And the more I'm willing to be disciplined on this earth to remember whatever it is that I'm fortunate enough to have in my 
DNA to be able to play music, then the more of a language I have to connect with other people. Wow. And so that's always been the safest place for me to connect. I can even play something in a little bit if you want. I think it might be cool on I Skype. Would but love what's that. Really cool, the really cool thing is my biological mother was an interior decorator and painter, which Dawn didn't really even know that much about, but that was like her talent skill set. And I discovered painting um, and photography maybe like five or six or seven years ago. I never painted ever and like that like this is I mean I don't know if you can see it right that's like one Board there's a couple two two <laughs> two two and they're around and I just I don't call myself a painter but I do feel that I've been fortunate to like be able to experience expressing stuff with painting and it it comes in flows and waves and you know most of these paintings that are around are an hour or two or maybe three of my time wow and, uh, but the other piece is the music, which is so interesting. And I will say this for sure. Like when I was in foster homes, I was exposed to the piano. When I was adopted finally in the final home, I was so lucky that there was a piano there because you have to imagine like there's so many houses on this planet that don't have that. And what would have happened if I didn't have that? Not only that, but my adopted family who weren't musically inclined, by the way, totally put me in lessons. And even though I struggled with learning and reading music and like really the practice of and the discipline of all that they fostered my I guess you want to say talent or whatever and helped me develop it as best as I could and that's super interesting and, and lucky for me to have had that and that wasn't the only thing I did in terms of the creative arts but it's the thing that stuck with me the longest and what's really interesting is that there were so many years especially in college where I didn't really feel a thousand percent like I was a real musician like oh maybe I was just kind of a fraud because there were so many things I couldn't do but I was really set on the music business and marketing and recording and documenting and putting together bands and having these ideas planned out and I would write them out and I have journals and journals of all these visions, you know, and, 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 and eventually, you know, the, 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 the practicing of the instruments and the developing of the songwriting caught up with my, um, what some people would have called the chutzpah or the tenacity or whatever. Right. So that there was a point where luckily it all kind of molded together. And then I did have something to show for like the pushiness I had to want to perform and like connect with people through music. But, um, I always thought that it was inherited. I really did. I was like, there's no way that I could be born to be able to play music like this or play guitar or like have harmony in my ear or just, there's just, this is not possible. I just, it was too, too much of like a thing, a part of me that I just knew it had to have been somewhere in my family. And what's funny is that mm. D is a real full on musician and he's super good. And the, we actually have sort of taken a little too long of a hiatus in terms of connecting with that. Because we've been focusing on a bunch of other stuff. Like but sobriety. We have, well, no, he doesn't have an issue with that. He really genuinely doesn't have an issue with it. He chooses it, and then he does it. He's he. I'm sure if he had been taking you know something super hard like heroin when we met, it would have been a harder thing to kick. Yeah. But the choices that he was making at the time that we met, which were still very heavy and very deeply involved in the lifestyle for whatever reason, a month later, he like just wasn't interested in that for the moment and right now and he's made it clear and I'm sure about it too it's like his choices are what they are he's choosing he's choosing and he's not a prisoner to the drugs there you know he may be a he may be guided by habits and certain life choices that are familiar and comfortable for him and anything I've ever exposed him to most anything has been a first I can remember the first time he ever had frozen yogurt in his life. It was on Halloween, and it was so fun to put a bunch of candy and like this big, awesome frozen yogurt thing for him. I know that's not your thing, but for him, <laughs> it was better than heroin. Maybe not. Well, it was maybe not. They're connected. They're connected. Sugar, heroin. It's like of exactly. The same. It's but it, we're eating. We're the, weaning. Like, we're weaning. Well, that's the thing. Like we visit sugar and we visit coffee and those two things have been a really fun, non-organic approach. But you did mention earlier and I'll throw it in there for a good measure because we are on humor, healing, humanity, that's right. organic, being healthy, whatever channel. Passionate um, about health and goodness and wellness in the world. Amen. Well, Amen. We, Sister. We yes. So for example, because of his, um, 
um, probation regulations, a lot of the time that they were broken was because it was impossible or un, un, uh, interesting to not do whatever drugs he wasn't allowed to take. Now, he actually legitimately got a bronchial infection and had a fold. And there was a list of things that he actually still couldn't take, which almost seemed ludicrous because it's like, well, really? But, I mean, it was just the fact. So in the beginning, I was like, well, I used to be vegan. I actually know how to approach being really, really sick from a vegan place. So let's try it. So I totally pulled out the organic lemon juice, the cayenne pepper, apple cider vinegar. Ginger. Um, like, I, I, I made a bunch oil. of like, lemon chocolate. Uh huh. And I also did um, like this organic-y green soup that I make, which is like it's a it's a puree. It's one of the best. And I Yay. take everything green almost. I do um, uh, spinach and a little bit of kale, but that makes it chunky. Um, um, zucchini and uh, broccoli and leeks and sea salt Yum. and a little bit of cayenne pepper and coriander and I stir fry it all a certain way with some water and then I put it in the bullet, which is my favorite blender ever. Go you don't girl. Have to too long. And then puree it and we take shots to that. And I mean, it helped enough until there are just times where our bodies have, need antibiotics. Like, sorry, we're not superhuman. We're just super close. So <laughs> that's, well, that's, another, that was that's an another video. We won't go there now. I don't believe that. But that is great that you believe that. And Jenny, of all people, has taught me to just accept other people, radically accept their beliefs and radically accept where they are at the moment. And I have mine. She has hers. And we love each other nonetheless. But that's no, that's incredible. Good. Like truly living each day, helping your dad, your dad. That's so crazy. It's so perfect. Well, I actually don't call him my dad. Oh, I actually specifically call him my biological father because that's the title that he is. My dad was Bill Albert. He earned that by having raised me. And actually, D specifically even said earlier today, he's like, I don't think I would have been able to have given you everything that the Alberts did. Oh God, and yeah. and you know and. He even, like, one time we called my adopted mom, and he was like, I just want to thank you so much. And also another piece is that, though throughout this entire interview, we do refer me uh, refer to me as Jenny Alpert, which people know me for all these years. He actually knows me as Cameron, which is my biological given name, and he calls me Cammy. And most people in this part of my life, in um, the social services areas, in the all of the... Um, the services for homeless that we utilize, um, the churches we go to for like the meals that he gets, um, the food pantries for groceries, um, to offset his welfare money so that he can afford everything he needs. The, um, transitional men's like home where you need to be sober to live there. Like I got him into one of those and it's a very unique place because most of them have pretty strict regulations and we sort of got a few bent so that Don can have the freedoms that he would need in order to really be willing to stay there. So yeah, I mean, my, my identity is kind of like a full circle split in a way. So it's really neat to kind of have both sides of the coin. And I actually was just on the phone with my biological cousin like an hour ago. So, and wow. a foster family I lived with for quite a while does contact me kind of quite a bit. So it's kind of neat to kind of have doors open, like anyone can be family if you want them to be, because we do have soul contracts, right? So We do. I believe it, honey. <laughs> you, you, throughout this incredible journey, have taught me that more than anyone else I know. So thank you, honey, for sharing your journey with me, because it has been just such a joy to watch and such an inspiration. I can't even tell you. I always tell you. I'm telling you right now. It's being recorded, I'm telling you. But yeah, no, I'd love to hear... I'd love to hear some of your music if you're willing to play for us. And yeah. I'd, just, I'd love for you to, um, while you're getting your instrument and getting winding up, tell us how we can find you and your music. Okay. You can hear her. Um, I'll grab the 19th. I'm thinking it's JennyAlpertMusic.com. Her songs, Breaking Down, Heaven. There's songs about love, relationships, life. I'll do a guitar for now because the piano is far away. That's a beautiful and, um, I put, guitar. It's, it's a little pear-shaped guitar from the 1900s. Oh, my gosh. And when we do a follow-up interview, um, I can invite Dee on. And yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's see if I can remember this song. What song is it? 
Um, it's a song I wrote when I was in Nashville with a really awesome songwriter who happened to have passed away, but he was one of my like songwriter um, mentors there. Beautiful. So it's called. Um, well, I don't remember the name. I just know the song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right where I belong, playing guitar, singing song. This road is all I know. I'll keep going, but I'm not gone. People think that I just don't care, but they don't know what's going on in here. Head full of dreams that could go anywhere. Guess you could say I'm up in the Folks, they pass on by straight ahead and keep in time. While this road is all I know, playing songs, keeping right. People think that I just don't care. Don't drive a truck and I don't. Pennies in this cup won't make a good Yes, you could say I'm up in the air, up in the air where feet don't need no shoes. Up in the air where the sky is gray or blue. Up in the air, there's nothing to lose. They don't know. But I do. People think that I just don't care. They don't know what's going on in here. Head full of dreams that could go anywhere. Guess you could say I love you. Beautiful! Oh, I honey, I love it there. I love it there. I love that song. Now you guys, now you got a taste. I hope that inspired you to go check Jenny out. How can we find more of your amazing, magical, inspirational, beautiful, uplifting music? Anyone who wants to be online can find onlineness. So um, yeah, iTunes, YouTube. But what's your website? Well, J E N N I. A L P E E R T dot com. J E N N I. J E N N I A L P E R T dot com. Uh huh. And if you're interested in more of the story with D and pictures of our whole journey that we've had for quite some time, um, there is a Facebook page called Cami. <gasps> what? I had no idea. I learned so much on my own interviews. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm going to go like it. I hope there's a love button, but I for right now I'll like it. You are so uh -huh. inspirational, Cami Jenny. I am just so grateful that you agreed to be on the show. You have just shined so much light. The sage that I lit in this room and your heart are just uplifting my soul truly now and always. I am so grateful for you. Is there anything that you want to tell our viewers about life, love, happiness, music, or you before we sign off? I would say this. Um... If you ever have a thought in your mind when you're experiencing life as it so happens, work as hard as you can to isolate the difference between a thought that's inspired by fear and a thought that's inspired by intuition that is led by love. Because the ones that are of the latter are going to be the ones that can truly help someone else. And um, there's no reason why, in my opinion anyway, um, to not live that way. So I think that's a really... Um, healthy, helpful thought in terms of the separation and um, trust your gut as best as you can. And the one thing I really try to live by, honestly, is um, the acceptance of what is the constant is actually growth and change, which is evolution. And that's how you love people is knowing that they're going to evolve and they're going to change and they're going to want things and then not want things. And 
and be interested and then not be interested. And when the third party in your life between you and your relationships is life itself, it's really a beautiful thing to share. So, oh my yeah. gosh, honey. Thank you so much for that. So inspirational. Jenny Alpert, check her out. You can read about her story on Grok Nation. You can read about her story on my Facebook page. You can listen to her story here. Yeah. And you can check out her music online, Jenny Alpert. Where is she? I'm here. Ah. You, I love you, babe. I'm so grateful that you did this love. interview. Thank you. I don't you. know if you can still see me, I but can thanks still for having you. me. Thank you for being had. You're incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Stay tuned for more. We're going to do a follow-up interview with Jenny's biological father, D. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this stuff. And lots of love from Jenny Alpert and Abby Lodmer signing off.